Most conversations centered on the photos, but she had one question she couldn't verbalize. What if they took video? If so, my life is over. Late in the week, as they greenlit through worst case and end of the world scenarios, he described how his coach had been understanding about his no-show at the game and how professional soccer teams were beating down his door. Some were even Northeast clubs, driving distance to Ivy League schools. Maybe he could get picked by a club near her. He could keep an apartment. He just needed somebody who understood him. After a week, she was no longer holding her breath. Maybe the worst had passed, one and done. When not working, they were inseparable. He was a gentleman, held the door, paid for dinner, didn't put a hand on her, although she needed him to. But then the attachments showed up in her email. His, too. She threw up in the bathroom. When his Porsche arrived, she signed herself out of school. Exhibiting the strength she needed, J.P. sent the videos to his dad, an international lawyer with offices in Germany and France. His father immediately canceled meetings and got on the phone, demanding answers from the authorities. He was flying in tonight to meet with a special crimes unit that handled this sort of thing, hire an investigator, and spend some much-needed time with his son. They were headed to the islands for the weekend, a short trip to the family home. She was welcome to come along. They had a sailboat. They could just get out of here. He'd set the hooks deep. Her mom dropped her off, exchanged phone numbers with the dad, and Chris promised to call when they landed. That was 27 days ago. J.P., whose real name was not Jean-Pierre, and who had never been a semi-pro soccer player, had one thing going for him, a boyish face. While I don't know the particular facts, I know his type. On their first date, he had slipped something in her drink, driven her to a hotel, and staged the photos, which, when they awoke, made him look like just as much a victim as she, completing the act that knit them together. The last breadcrumb led me to a small villa outside Florence, one more stop on the Underground Railroad, although this one did not lead to freedom, more like a train to Auschwitz. I tore a strip off the bedsheet and tied a tourniquet around my arm, J.P. was no high schooler, but he was a knife guy, and the puncture was deep and the blade serrated. I hate knives. Maybe worse than guns. I press-checked my SIG, one in the chamber, one in the magazine. Not much to work with, so getting out should be interesting. Footsteps and angry shouting thundered above us, multiple languages, evidence that the fire I'd set was spreading toward the tank. We didn't have long. I pulled her cheerleading sweats onto her sweat-soaked body and felt a profound sense of sadness. Why hadn't I gotten here sooner? What evil had been inflicted while they transported her and other girls in a drug-induced haze by bus and boat and plane? I stared at J.P. lying limp on the floor beneath me. Why do the evil prosper? Bones had taught me that. I pushed him out of my mind. He pushed back. It had been three months since I learned the truth about Marie, and I still hadn't come to grips with reality. For 14 years, Bones had known she was alive and yet not told me. 14 years while I circled the globe looking for her. Logically, I understood why he said nothing as a priest. Emotionally, I could not wrap my head around how he kept silent as my friend. I would have walked through hell if I'd known she was alive. He knew that. The chasm between knowing why and how was a lonely, painful place. I tried to shake the memory. Dwelling on matters of the heart in moments like this would get me killed. I glanced at Chris, tender, young, and now wounded. One more casualty in a twisted world where sick and wealthy men with no conscience buy what they want because they can, no matter the damage. Trafficking in people is an evil without comparison, and the motivations of those responsible are beyond comprehension. If I got her home, I'd offer to find her and her mom a place at...